Hello everyone, my name is Flair Blitz and welcome to Devil's Door, a horror visual novel made for the Spooktober 2020 visual novel jam. You are the new kid in town, and as being the new kid in a small town, it's never easy. Fortunately, you've got a cool aunt and a new friend to help you along the way. But when Ma Brooks' secrets start to crawl out of the night of Halloween, will you live long enough to uncover them? Or will a deal with the devil be your fate? Well, one way to find out, and that is to select new game. Okay, content warning, this game contains depictions of violent blood and gore and disturbing imagery. It also contains sudden and or disturbing audio and the use of foul language. Player and viewer discretion is advised. Let's get into this game then. By what name shall we call you? You can call me, um, Flair. There we go. Flair. Flair. I'm, I'm so, so happy to talk to you. Ah, oh, voice acting, lovely. And there's a rather evilish looking eye pupil. I've been waiting and waiting to meet you meet again. You again. How eagerly have you been awaiting to meet us again? All this time watching you has gotten me lonely. Gotten me lonely. <laughs> I also like the echoes as well. I want to be with you. With you. How badly do you want to be with us? Soon, darling. Look, we just met you, and you're already friend zoning us this badly. You'll be able to join my world. Is that an imaginary world based off your ideology of what you love and dislike? Soon. Soon. Boys acting is rare to come by, but it's lovely when it is. Here's a question. Would you like to have bad voice acting in the game because it is voice acting in the game or would you rather have no voice acting at all? For me, I would say no voice acting, but in a way, it's good to have voice acting because it gives a character a bit more depth. Another day, waking up to dry mouth and a dull headache. This game also has a several endings to it with only one of them being good the rest of them being bad i laid an arm across my face blocking the glare of the sunlight from creeping through the windows ahead of me unfortunately i still haven't gotten around to buying curtains or much of any decor for that matter considering the bare state of my room i mean what's wrong with our room that's right my room i guess i still couldn't believe it just a month ago, I was living 2,000 miles away from here, back with mum and pop. It was finally time to pack up for college, and instead of choosing the local state university, I decided to listen to my adventurous side and left to attend a small rural cottage instead. I'd say the most important thing when it comes to choosing your university is what major or what subject would you like to focus on? because each university is dedicated to a specific subject that it really excels at. Obviously, the local university could have your particular subject of choosing, but it's not always going to have that uh, luck on your side if you are looking for another subject. It wasn't particularly prestigious, but it was within my budget. budget so <laughs> budget. Prior to this, I haven't really spent time away from my family all that much. We were tight-knit, and it's not like I wanted to get away from them either. I just wanted to see if I could do it. To be on your own? That was it. I wanted to see if I could live, work, and steady, study independently for my parents. I mean, they always supported me well enough, but I was still a child in their eyes. I think that's the thing with every caring parent, is it? No matter how old you are, you're still going to be their child. And it only became more apparent the more I grew up. So here I was, making it work out here in a countryside town for once. I still didn't know if I had made the right choice. Only time will tell. A notification sound interrupted my thoughts. I will be the kind soul... Oh, uh... oh yeah, we did do it. Cool. We're going to be the kind saw and answer it. I reached out to grab the noisy object, but just as it was within my grasp, the rings proceeded to keep repeating again and again. 
the frenzy of back-to-back -back calls told me all I need to know about the caller. Was it mom? Oh, Ash, okay. <laughs> With a tired groan, I pushed myself up to get decent. Any minute now and a little devil will come barge. Hi. Pick up your phone for once. Uh, really? Pick up my phone? Don't you see that I was dressing? Uh, what else is there? Uh, background volume. Uh, what? What is in the background? <laughs> Looks like he's in a different language. What is his language? What's going on? Text speed, auto text weight, sound effect volume, background volume music. Uh, I need to go back. I don't know what that um, Chinese or Japanese rising was. Genie, barging in. <laughs> I sighed, unable to feign excitement toward my uninvited guest. How about I do that after you learn that spamming my phone with calls won't make me any more likely to actually answer? In that case, for me, it would actually make my chance of answering someone decrease if they keep spamming it. With a few exceptions. Number one, my parents. Number two, my family. Which also considers number one family. I'll consider it. Shut up, Ash. If you consider throwing out your wardrobe and setting it on fire. Ash, you just came barging in and you're telling us what to do already? I mean, is that really what you wear to bed? I huffed and I puffed and I pushed her past to grab a fresh shirt from the closet. Suddenly embarrassed of my band T circa 1960s. Or maybe you should get some proper taste in music one of these days. <laughs> I was just kidding. Yeah, yeah, Ash. I actually like that band. The Kinkies? Okay. It's just too easy to pick on you sometimes. So you're one of those people that has a great sense of humor. Relieved at hearing her words, I smiled softly before in my, turning my back towards her and looking over my shoulder. So, can you go out for a minute so I can get dressed already? What, you mean I don't get a front row seat to see you in all your glory? Absolutely not. Talk about a ripoff. Yep. Ash laughs jokingly. Pivoting to leave before she notices the assemble I had laid out on my bedside. Wait, you can't be serious. Yes, I am very serious, and don't you dare tell anybody else about that wear that I'll be wearing underneath the wear that you can see all the time. Where is your costume? What, is this a Halloween or something? It's Halloween, dummy. Okay, so it is Halloween. You think I dressed like this for shits and giggles? Yes. Well, I really wouldn't put it past you. And newsflash, we're 19, Ash. I think it'll be fine if I don't show up to my college class and clown a tear. That just proves how you know nothing about this town. Just shut up. I just moved here recently. What have you got? All your life here? I scoffled. Yeah, like you know everything about it. Moving here a few months before me doesn't really give you expert certification or anything. Four months is plenty of time to collect evidence. No, four months to collect evidence is far too late for a crime scene. Especially in a spooky place like Marbrook. Okay, so I did pronounce that correctly, I think. There it was. Evidence. Ash treated our daily lives living in Marbrook like some detective game. Since meeting her, I've had to listen to my fair share of conspiracy theories about the town and all the people here. Sure, the townspeople were pretty close off, as if they had been living happily in their circle and any visitors were less than welcome. But that didn't mean they were all loonies. I often tried to convince them to be less judgmental, especially since both our families came from big cities. I mean, that's how it is in the country, right? Taking things slow was to be expected. At least... That's what I read on iReadit.com, ra <laughs> a spin-off of Reddit. Too tired to push back, I simply nodded along instead. Yep, aliens, werewolves, such and such. Suit yourself. Just know, I'll be ready with some silver while you hide away in La La Land pretending it all doesn't exist. Okay, <laughs> that's even more incredible. How's a ten-foot slobbery monster with razor-sharp teeth and claws going to be scared off by your grandma's necklace? Anaphylactic shock. Duh. Duh. They're allergic, genius. I see. A particular weakness. 
Oh, like how vampires are allergic to garlic. Got any proof of that besides the great tellings of your campy romance novels? A knock on the door cut off her next rebuttal. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> Come in. Expecting who it was, I sit back on my bed and called out an invitation. Come in! And who could it be? Hey, Miss Moore. Hello, Miss Moore. Keeping it up, I see. Love your costume. Aunt Moore came in dressed in a classic navy blue button down that tied at her waist. Her hair was wrapped in a polka dot bandana that announced her costume identity quite plainly. As an independent woman living and working by herself in the countryside, Rosie the Riveter's f flair worked more of to reveal my aunt's inner self rather than mis masking it. Aunt Moore beamed at the compliment and bounced excitedly. Really? Oh, yes! I am so happy it landed. Hey. And I love your costume too, Ash. Go Smashers, right? If there was an option to turn up the voice acting, I would, but it was just sound effects and BGM. Background music. Ghost Smashers. Ghostbusters? Her words trailed off and Aunt Moore's brows started to knit together upon some realization. Ashlyn Garrett Mayfield, is that a cigarette in your mouth? Exactly, how dare you? That is disgusting. In my house? Exactly, disgusting. Well, Miss Moore, it's just bubblegum. Yeah, right. When do you ever see a, a bubblegum that's got the aesthetic appeals of a cigarette? I gotta stay true to the character. Authenticity is everything. You can do that outside of the house. I couldn't imagine a more fitting scene between these two. Between Aunt Moore's rash conclusion and Ash's bullheadedness, the two were made for a high strung maid match in heaven. Oh, alright. Ten points for Ash. Mm-hmm, and no points for me. You can redeem them for a donut on me sometime. No probs, Miss M. There may have been two basket cases with more than a few holes, but they were the closest people to me here in Marbrook. Once my parents found out about my desperate attempts to move out of the city, they pushed for me to consider the Rift Valley Institute, the college I currently attend. Aunt Moore or Madri uh how do you pronounce that name as Mom Calder, was an unwed sister living on the old farmland their father had brought a while back. Adrina. After meeting my father, mother moved to my hometown to build a life where Aunt Moore started working as a rancher. Maury? Moore? Maury. Since then, she's scored a few entrepreneur deals and has been living pretty comfortably by herself. The free-spirited lifestyle she lived along with her eccentric manners kind of made her the black sheep of her family. In a way, I think sending me out to her was a way to keep her close and help keep my living costs low. Well, what do you think? What do I think of what? Aren't I just... The greatest? Riveting. <laughs> uh, the most riveting, aunt. You're the most riveting riveter to ever, <laughs> to have ever riveted, auntie. Your sarcasm will only take you so far. Alright, then, uh... Oh, wait, there's no way to backlog... Well, I have some jack-o'-lantern pancakes I did, downstairs. I didn't know the scroll wheel down did that. Oh, your sarcasm would take you so far. Smiled. Don't see your costume. Sorry, folks. I didn't realize that was a thing. I think this game is made in an engine that's not rimpy. Which is quite universal for me to get to use to. I have some jack-o'-lantern pancakes made downstairs. Again, cold as we you speak. You too, us. Actually... He doesn't have a costume set. We have class in an hour, too. Well, all that means is we got a trip to be making. Mm-hmm. I'll pack the pancakes to go. Okie dokie. Pancakes. Aunt Moori hops down the hall and I hear her sing all the way to the kitchen downstairs. <sighs> I guess we're doing this. Can you give me a few to get situated? I got this headache but it won't leave me alone. Again? Yeah. Isn't this, like, the third week in a row? Third week in a row. Consistency, baby. Are you sure it's not your blood pressure or something? No, I am absolutely certain it's not my blood pressure. 
Yeah, I had a check at the school infirmary that told me that much at least. I think I'm just having a hard time with sleep. Residual jet lag or something. Really? I mean, we don't have to go. What do you mean we don't have to go? It's school. Of course we need Hell, to go. we can ditch class altogether. That sounds like a crap idea. It would be a good time to eat through the hoard of snacks I've been collecting. Hoard of snacks. Is that what you're supposed to distribute at Halloween? Snacks? Chocolate bars? Lollipops? Or in America, candy? Though she maintained an uninterested expression, I smiled at the sincerity in her voice. Between the Illuminati rabbit holes and her rants about how Alex... Alexa Wakerstone had to be a demon in human flesh. It wasn't often you'd find Ash actually sentimental. Acting sentimental, don't worry about it. I'll get over it soon enough. I'll ask Aunt Maury for some ibuprofen. We've got some pumpkin flavored pancakes to get to after all. I could have sworn her face got a shade or two more red, but Ash looked away before I could get a good look. My favorite thing from pumpkins is pumpkin spice latte. They are just simply the best thing ever from is Starbucks. Is that how you interpreted it? Yes. Pumpkin-shaped pancakes came to mind instead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, even better. As Ash left the room, I made sure I looked presentable for the day and brought along my wallet and backpack. We're just under an hour to finish costume shopping to make it to our history class. Being late to Ms. Ellsworth's class was definitely not something I wanted to do. Partially because she was a rather strict teacher and, well, other reasons to Keep those thoughts to yourself, mate. All ready to leave, I closed the door behind me and we headed off to the nearest Hallows Town store. To the store we go. The Hallows Town store wasn't far and the three of us made a fun ride of a short trip pumpkin shaped pancakes in tow oh upon entering through i was minded why i wanted to avoid halloween altogether a dramatic organ tune played and so as i passed the red sensors of an animatronic skeleton it's arm reaching out to grab me hello my name's freddy freddy i stepped through a maze of nuclear green spider web bean and caution tape only to enter a field of zombie graves and we haven't even reached the costume section yet eerie music echoed from the speakers as i coughed past multiple fog and smoke machines <sighs> why everyone was so enarmed with halloween i couldn't understand it was the same every year the decorations were ridiculous there were rarely any actual meals to be had, and it resulted in one of the greatest of abominations Earth had to offer. Candy corn. I couldn't help another sigh and push on board, hoping to get this done quickly. Is that what you mean by sudden flashes? The first time is scary, the other times... Maybe not. Loosing my footing, I stumbled back into a rack of scythes and bloody axes, knocking one of them over. Ugh. And this is terrifying looking clown slash grim reaper thing. The ever constant need for all people around you to come up and scare you, as if they were paid to do so. Maybe they are paid to do so. Of course, I could only expect, expect as much from Ash. Got ya, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Your face was perfect. My face? How could you see my face with that mask on? Obviously, it has oh eyes, eyes for it. There's oh some my. special jack in the box, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at all these decorations. Maybe I should have gotten more for the lawn. Gotten more for the lawn, you say? Straightening the display I bumped into, I watched the two women in front of me explore the aisles of latex masks and pistol weapons. Clearly delighted. I was about to say dignified for some odd reason. Alright, we got a god here, people. How about I start on this side and we pick out a few looks that would fit? Of course. And the costume's on me today, since we all but dragged you out of bed for this. What did you mean? I was getting up and then Ash just barged in. Anything specific in mind? Um, nothing that's too flashy. Ooh, how about dressing up as a hot goblin? Here's the mask. 
there's green ooze that squeezes out of this guy's pimples. Yuck. Ugh. Ash, I hold back my gag reflexes as demonstrated squeezing lumps of jelly-like ooze out of a mask. <laughs> The viscous substance plopped on the tile floor, pulling at her feet. Well, I should clean that up. Yes, you better bloody do so. Sorry for being ruder. You know what? Ash doesn't get to pick any. How about that? Alright, fine. <laughs> I'm guessing you want to play it safe, right? We've always got to play it safe. You never know what life comes at you. I just want something that's not going to embarrass me, honestly. Besides, there's only so many costumes left. Looks hmm. like... Hmm. Are you planning to go trick-or-treating tonight? I didn't even hear that. Knowing Alexa the Scare Queen, she'll probably invite you to some rager where everyone gets smashed and you all barf on each other before midnight. Okay, fine. Yes, that's probably the plan that was in toad anyways before you mentioned it. A rager, huh? Rager? Wager? That hmm. doesn't sound so nice. Don't worry, Aunt Moy. Ash is just exaggerating. I don't think anyone's planning to get that wasted. Well, just know I'd want to keep the two of you safe. Mm-hmm. Certainly. But I think Ash has other ideas. You can always call me up for a designated driver if you need to. Okie dokie. Wow, Miss Moore. My parents would freak out at the thought of me drinking. That's so cool of you. <laughs> cool, aunt. I was in college not too long ago. I remember what it was like. Sure do. Just try to stay out of anything too risky. I can't guarantee you that. Fox News says Halloween is the most dangerous night of the whole year after all. Uh -huh. uh, according to your grandmother, that is. Yes. A oh. lot of things are heard from one's grandmother. You mean like visiting the house on the end of the block? The one with the recluse who only does his shopping through Rainforest Prime? Amazon Prime. <laughs> I don't follow. Ash thinks a house on the end of a block is haunted. Like the guy doesn't really live there or something. Have you ever seen him? Well, no, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't exist. <sighs> We're getting off track again. Oh, right. Well, let's get going. Meet back here in ten. Ten minutes, baby. Let's get going on our grand adventures for the Here's the roundup. Which side do you want to pick first? You know, for leftover costumes, these aren't bad. Mm-hmm. How do I know which one's which, though? You know, we'll go with Aunt Moore's decision. Oh. Wait, who are we playing as? Um... Okay, I'm a new kid in town, but I don't know my own, um... Identity. I am going with the Devil Queen. The alluring gothic gown was adorned in tiny metallic squeaklings that glistened under the light. This design's dramatic and dark look drew me, drew me in and the horn clip ons fit comfortably. I smiled at my choice. Oh yeah. Ready yet? Last starts in 15. I'm just coming out. I stepped out from behind the curtain, all dressed and unexpectedly excited to show off the threads. Aunt Moore whistled while looking me up and down. I think we've got a winner. <laughs> Don't you, Ash? Uh, you look... good. Okay, Ash. <laughs> Aunt Moore is beaming as she comes in close to make small adjustments to the fit. Meanwhile, Ash seems to suddenly find the lights particularly interesting. Thanks, guys. I wouldn't have come here if it weren't for you. And Aunt Moy, are you sure about the costume? I brought my wallet along. It's no problem. Ah, wait a minute. In that sequence, our flame did. Uh, sorry, our name did not pop up there. So I wouldn't have offered have... otherwise. I wouldn't have offered. Okay. <laughs> uh, it just showed that um, without the name of the character above the text. It just feels to me as if that's what the character was thinking, rather than saying. Ash slyly pokes my ribs and clears her throat to the side of me. <clears throat> hey, wait. What is it, Ash? Can I talk to you for a minute? Alone? What's wrong with Aunt Mori here? 
Obliging her request, we stick to the changing area as Aunt Moy heads to the, ca the checkout line. Okay. So... What is it, Ash? You know how... Everyone seems to like you better than me? Absolutely not, but I'm glad to hear it. What? Ash? You know it's true. How do you know that, though? I just... <sighs> to make sure you wouldn't ditch me. Why would we ditch our friend? I mean, Alexa's probably gonna invite you to some party, or whomever. I just don't want you to leave me feeling like a loser or something, because I didn't get invited. Why would we ever do that to a friend? Ash, you shouldn't even be thinking like that. Look, wherever I go tonight, I'll make sure to drag you along, okay? Drag? What? Do you need me to make a pinky promise? Softening, Ash reaches out her hand to meet my own. Her dainty fingers wrap around mine and she smiles once more. Promise, dummy. Don't call me a dummy, okay? And just like that, Ash is back to herself. Insults and all. By now, Aunt Moy is all finished checking out and waves to us from the exit. Hey, in case you've forgotten, we gotta get you two to class. Hey, hey. Class is in session for today, folks. Quickly finishing our checkout, Aunt Moy floored into Rift Valley and we barely make it on time. One of the biggest perks of college had to be the flexible schedules. I counted it as a blessing that Miss Elseworth's class didn't even begin until 11. I'm sure the other students did so too considering her rather brutal punishment policies. What do you mean? Class has started, students. Okie dokie. Now, who failed to complete their reading assignments last night? Shouldn't you say who succeeded? That would be more positive. Fess up now and you'll only receive a 20-point reduction from your grade. I see. As beautiful as she was, Miss Ellisworth's cold dominion was enough to scare off even the most ardent of suitors. The room went silent until a single hand was raised. Benji. He stood up and made it to the front of the class. Yeah, so I tried, Miss Ellsworth, but I just think 100 pages was a bit harsh. 100 pages, huh? Benji Wilds was typically a top student for what I gathered. He was one of a few freshmen being groomed to join the Versity Football League, and was pretty well liked. His family was even quite well off and lived up in the mansion up the hill. Problem was, every now and then, his mouth would get better of him. Like now. I mean, not to put down your judgment, but I've got Mr. Alvarez's 50 pages and Mrs. Potts' English test today, too. Yep. <laughs> the day before Halloween, no less. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be common practice to swamp us with work like this. <laughs> if you moan about the work that you've got now, you're only going to get even more and in greater numbers. Especially before a holiday we're helping our families with. Honestly, what was it with Halloween in this town? Was it really such a big deal? I doubt anyone really read all the pages, and didn't just look up Sparker notes anyway. <laughs> I don't know that reference. Closing the history textbook in her hands, Miss Ellisworth calmly sat down at her desk. This is just like you. <laughs> Oh, hello there. Fucking degenerate. <laughs> Just take the loss and get on with your life. Stop trying to get everyone else in trouble because you can't handle getting a shit grade. Gosh, Alexa, you're really harsh. Oh boy, that was Alexa Wakerson. A complete hothead with way more power than any single student should have. As an up-and-coming tennis star, chief of the yearbook committee and daughter to the superintendent of the district. I'm sure she could get any student expelled if she wanted to. What I like to call self proclaimed Seriously, Alexa? Shouldn't that costume be like banned for your kind? <laughs> I never knew you wanted to be someone else so badly. <laughs> A different persona. <sighs> if looks could kill, those red eyes could. Benji would be at the bottom of a ravine. <laughs> Alexa was practically seething with anger now, and the entire class held our breaths for what was to come. Hmm. 
Surprisingly enough, Alexa caught herself and huffed, calming herself down. You know, it's pretty unfortunate that you were born without manners, class, or decency. But your outfit suggests that you're still trying. <laughs> How about you just stop and accept who you are? An audible sigh left Miss Alice Worth's no doubt from contemplating her regret over ever choosing such a profession. <laughs> Both Alexa and Benji took it as their cue to sit back down. Huff and a puff and a wolf will blow everyone's desks down. Let me open up this discussion to the whole class. And what would that be? Do you think it's fair I assign so much reading? I would say yes and no. I thought about it. Though I had managed to fish, finish reading, I didn't blame Benji. Miss Ellsworth was notorious for assigning insane amounts of homework. Ash was getting a failing, failing grade too. What do you mean by this? Uh, do I? Oh, do I think it's fair? I can't even save at this conjuncture. <laughs> I can't even go to the menu and save. That's. That's a curse of certain visual novel games to not allow you to save beforehand. I think that it wasn't fair. I gulped, preparing myself for what I was going to say. No, Miss Ellsworth. I think 100 pages was a bit cruel. Looks like I'll have to take your opinions into account next time after all. Okay. As for today... As for today. This pot seems to be setting a good example. Mm-hmm. Oh, hi there. Ready, fight. <laughs> what? Pop quiz? You're right, Benji. What about me is right? What have I done correctly this time around? I don't know who really read the chapters or not. So how's about a pop quiz? Okay, just to see about all this. <laughs> the glass collectively awed and turned took turns glowing daggers into Benji's skull. Oh dear. Resigned to my fire spend of the rest of class scratching my head at half of the questions on Miss Ellsworth's pop quiz. Why are you not Miss or Misses? I wonder why. This couldn't possibly be worth more than 20% of our grade. Right? I'm sure it is. Don't you doubt about it. I really don't know if I did well on that test or not. All I could do was leave it up to the scan scantron gods, I guess. <laughs> Considering the defeated looks on your faces, I think we all have learned a thing or two today. Look, we're not all Miss Ellsworth, okay? Yeah, that you're a complete slave driver. <laughs> now, taking into consideration your feelings towards homework on Halloween... Yes. I won't be assigning any tonight. Okay. Hey, that got a round of applause. I hope you have a lovely night celebrating the festivities. Mm-hmm. I certainly will. <laughs> and do stay safe, class. Yes, we'll try our best to stay safe, but you know we can't guarantee that. Uh, Miss Ellsworth leaves the class to our own devices with a coy smile that had my heart skipping a beat. The professor might have been a sadistic fiend, but that didn't deter from her feminine fatal manner. I don't know how to pronounce that word. In fact, only inflamed it. Alright guys, I want to come up and apologize. Okay, Benji. I shouldn't have said all those things to Miss Ellsworth and get us all punished. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Benji stood up looking like a lost pup, his eyes practically drooping. <laughs> no forgiveness. I don't know, Benji. That was a pretty... <laughs> she moved. As if a dam broke, Benji curled in on himself, looking as though he'd break out into tears. You're so obvious, Benji. <laughs> Alexa pushed her way past a crowd of exiting students, her angel wings knocking down books and flyers. How about I give you a treat to move aside? Mm-hmm. What kind of treat? Preparing for another verbal match between the two, I sat back down and removed myself from their range. Aggressive as ever. Okay, uh... On my desk? Why? Benji just said sidestep, sir. What? I've got Mr. Alvarez's class up anyway. But my family's hosting a gathering tonight, if you want to come. Hope to see you there. 
With one last toothy grin, he casually flicks one of Alexa's fake wings and scuffs off. Wow. Now that that mongrel is out of the way, how about you take me up on my invitation instead? Did you offer us an invitation in the first place? Combing her hair through her hair? Hands through her hair, sorry. Alexa watched me with a cute wonder as if gazing at a plaything. You know, as the new kid, you've been drawing a lot of attention lately. What kind of attention? So you'd be perfect at my party. Why, thank you very much. Come to the Drifted Springs condos at 11. The enchantress in front of me leans in. Her eyes pierced in hypnotic. Oh dear. I feel myself sink deeper into my chair as if all the muscles in my body were being suited into a state of ease. Golly, wish I blinked at the moment was gone. Alexa was still hovering over me, anticipating an answer. Of course we would. I'll make it there. Count on it. Alexa left out a hefty laugh, throwing her head back. <laughs> I never even doubted. Okay. Her nimble fingers grasp onto the fabric of my costume and pull me in close. Great. Just gentle me this for we. <laughs> it's just too embarrassing to try and read all that out loud. <laughs> but you give a gist, folks. With a girl, she pulls away and leaves my body feeling weightless. Great. By the time I snap out of a trance, she left me in, but next bell has run and I'm left with only Ash in the room, her features pinched in a peeved expression. Wordlessly, Ash picks up her bags and heads for the door. But I catch her hand as she's leaving. Ash, just let me explain. Her bubblegum cigarette has fallen to the floor, and I feel her head tremble in my own. Suddenly tears well up in her eyes. Her heartbroken expression catches me off guard as I freeze, not knowing what to do. Ouch. Ash snatches her hand from my grasp and runs off. I call out to her, but she doesn't look back. <sighs> look at the clock overhead. I'm already five minutes late now. Guess I'd better head to class. I couldn't process the events that just occurred all within minutes of each other. Just what was that? Hmm. The remaining classes went by smoothly, with exception being that I never saw Ash throughout the rest of the day. Miss Ellsworth was the only one I had with her after all, but I still typically would have found her in the lounge or cafeteria in between breaks. All I wanted to do was to apologize and set things right with her, but she wasn't answering any of my texts, and I didn't know where to look next. Come on, Ash. At least let me explain. It wasn't as if Ash and I were dating or anything. But ever since my first week in Marburg, she had been enthusiastic in her attempts to get along with me. At first I thought it was just Aunt Maury being, being close to her parents that pressured her to spend time. But the more I got to know Ash, I realised she was just... lonely. She probably felt so... Ox obs I don't know how to pronounce that word, from this rural town, where people had their own cliches and secrets that they didn't care to share with anyone. Checking my phone again for any replies to the messages I'd sent her. Nothing. Ash, where are you? I race across the grounds, growing more anxious with every lead turned cold. Lee turned cold. Deciding it'd be best to check her home next, I sent her parents a text to tell them about my arrival. Trick or treat. It was evening by the time I arrived at Ash's neighborhood porch lights flickering on in sync. Ash's parents replied that they were out of town again. They were supportive parents of what I could tell, but I had to leave for work after. I knocked on the door politely, hoping to see Ash, though I'm still unsure what to say. There was no answer and it didn't look like anyone was home. Ash's bedroom window was dark. Where could she have gone? Marbrook stores and businesses all but shut down for Halloween, with everyone so absorbed in festivities. So there weren't many places she could be. At least not the typical hangouts I'd find her at. The craft store, guitar center, or pet store, shop, sorry. I laughed quietly to myself. I never met someone so spontaneous as Ash before. Someone who just randomly ditched history for the sake of petting some puppies. The weight in the pit of my stomach grew heavy at the thought. I closed my eyes, recording the events that started this whole mess. Alexa was... Uh, yeah, as usual, 
but she took it to a whole new level today. Honestly, I couldn't even react in the moment, and that led to confusion. Ash's tears. I'd never seen her cry before. And in that moment, she took off so quickly that I didn't even notice. I just needed to find her, if only to know she was safe. Gathering a list of checkpoints in my head, I headed to the park to continue my search. And we have ourselves a stray cat here. Along the trailway that led to the park, I met a friend meowing softly beside the hedges. The familiar black cat gazed upon at me in perfect recognition. Not long after moving here, I often crossed paths with this cat and started feeding her with, I, with when I could so. Strangely, she was always coolly, re coolly reject any cat food and go straight for whatever lunch I had on hand. Of course, with the smell of those means, I didn't blame her. How are you doing there today? How are we working out for you? Set on my destination, I continued my stride as she turned to stroll alongside me. Following me, huh? Well, I'm not sure you want to do that. Luck doesn't seem to be on my side today. I smiled at the irony. Our precious friend has gone away somewhere as I fear the worst could happen. According to superstition, black cats were unlucky by default and were to be avoided at any costs. And it's Halloween as well. Thing is, my luck went sour way before you came today. As if she understood, the graceful feline meowed in response. Humoring the situation, I decided to keep talking. Yeah, a lot of things happened. I got roped into a few too many plans and hurt the only real friend I've got here. She might not even talk to me after this. I sighed dejectedly as we rounded the corner to the park. I looked around to no avail. Finally given in to the need to take a break, I collapsed onto a stone bench. Searching since the time class ended left me exhausted, and by now, the last remaining gleams of sunlight were escaping past the horizon. And the black cat again. My feline friend joins me, transfixed on my reactions. Uh, would be ah uh, oh okay that just that just turns it to full screen. Uh, configure. Okay, so get a little glimpse of a moment where it is no text on the screen. The H doesn't work. I laughed under my breath. You know, if I were to lose her, I don't know what I'd do. But here I am, not being able to keep searching. Should I try to send one last message? Just one. I decide to try one last time, texting Ash to stay safe and call me back when she could was all I when she could was all I could do for now. The rest would be up on her. I bite my lips in frustration. The headache I had been nursing since this morning had compounded tenfold, and ringing my ears interrupted any coherent thoughts. Uh, blank. I cursed in pain. While running around for half a day, I had clearly neglected to hydrate and pace myself. Black dots raced across my line of vision. My feline companion nestled a step closer, attempting to comfort me as she watches my pain rise. Ah, Lovely to have a companion like this cat. Every second that passes, it all grows less and less bearable and I lay back, hoping to calm my body down. I pass out before my head even touches the cool stone. Yikes. We pass out before- Darling. Yes. My darling. It's supposed to be some sort of demified version of Alexa. You're in pain. I know. I know. You know. It's okay. It's, okay. it's all it's okay. okay. I'll, make, I'll it make it go away. We don't need you to make it go away. Just you Just wait you for, me. for me. We'll be together. Soon. Really soon. Really soon, and it's now night time. Gradually waking up, I groaned up the aches in my back. The stone bench was close to freezing now, as chills of cold wind blew by. My feline friend had left and the moon was already peeking through the clouds. 
how long was I out for? Straightening myself up with a heave, I checked my phone. 10.44. Low battery and three messages. None of which were from Ash. Great. All my efforts today were in vain. I promised Ash I'd spend Halloween with her, but I had little hope of fulfilling that now. Should I just go home? I wonder if it would be worth it to catch to catch any of the invitations I was given for the night, considering my state. I was still in my costume after all. Oh, I decided to at least head back closer to home. And the cat was there again. Ah, I was blocked by our resident cat making yet another appearance. Squatting down to meet her gaze, I smiled gently. Sorry, bud. I don't have any snacks today. Looks like I really messed up, huh? Her dark colour blended into the shadows underneath, yet bright eyes stared back at me intently. Those are red eyes, though! And they have moon shapes to them as well, the crescent shape that the moon makes in the eyes as pupils. I pet her softly and she leaned into my caress, tail dancing as she purred. Oh gosh. <laughs> as I moved down to stroke her paws, I noticed something wet coating her fur. Blood. This was blood. Yep. I stared at the, my blood-stained hand incredulously. Alarmed, I check her for any injuries. <laughs> no. But she suddenly leaps up just outside my grasp. What is that there? Sheesh. Gosh, inside her mouth is my phone, the glass screen cracking as her fangs, fangs bite down. I lunge with her, but she dodges easily. Well, this is definitely a bad end. Pivoting, she sprints off down the avenue with me close behind. Great. Where are you leading to me to now? I'm close enough to grab her before she dives down an embankment that causes me to lose my footing. Tumbling down onto an unfamiliar road, I cut my knee open and hear the bone fracture upon impact. Pain shoots through me. An agonized cry escapes. Breathing harshly, I squint to find any signs of light. A clue to where I was. A signal for help. Somebody? Help? Hello? I need help. Only the darkness answered. Sucking in a deep breath, I push aside the pain and heave myself up. God, surely you can't just get up with a bone fracture. The sharp grip beneath me digs into my palms. Somebody? I need help. I call out until my voice grows hoarse, bleeding, broken and drained. I couldn't even drag my body forward. It was all I could do to continue surveying my surroundings for a sign of respite. And two eyes. Granting my wish, I saw a pair of lights make their way towards me. Here, I wouldn't count that as help. Hi. Desperate, I extend my hand. The lights encroach towards me faster and faster until... Until I'm doomed. I wake up aching. Wait, I... I made it. I could feel everything. The cuts, scrapes and bruises scattered across my body. The burn from my broken angle. But pain meant I was alive. I had miraculously survived. A croak of a laugh escaped me. But our vision is red. Rolling myself over, I looked up towards the dawn sky. Orange hues and blood red clouds blanketed the expanse above. No. Before me, a red sun engulfed the horizon. I choked back a sob in disbelief. God, that is a beautiful sunset, though. This. this couldn't be right. Shaking now, I push myself up to my feet. Yeah, this is definitely real. And this is definitely a case where we've been pushed into an alternate world. One granted by the devil himself. Strange. My body is so clearly beaten and bruised, but I was able to stand up just fine. As if my body was weightless. I look up towards the direction of the call. The cat again. You. You are the one who got me here. I stared at the cat frozen, unable to take it all that I was that was going on, sorry. 
She waved her tail listlessly, waiting. As if spellbound, I followed. Reaching an antique looking manor, the black cat spared me one last glass before jumping forth. Well then, through the door. I gasped, open mouthed. This, this all had to be a dream. That's right. Like the bizarre voices I've been hearing in my sleep. Maybe a dream, a gateway into my subconscious, right? But in that case, there could be anything behind this door. I hesitantly brushed my fingers across the brass handle. Should I open the door? Okay, this time we can say, but not on the other one. That's very ironic. My fingers wrap around the handle. I draw in one last slow breath and steal myself for what was to come. Aha. Uh -huh. The door slid open with ease and I was presented to a grand and expansive Victorian styled foyer. Large windows and a sunroof bathed with a space in scarlet luminosity, while delicate items were displayed alongside the walls. Was this someone's house? I didn't hear any voices, but I heard light steps coming from above me. Hello? Excuse me? No one answered, but the repetitive steps were getting louder. I stepped forward under the flickering blue lights of a chandelier. I make out a masculine voice calling out from a flight upstairs. The words are hard to make out. From my post, I watch a man descend the stairs. Just how do these things get lost all the time? Hmm? I stand there awkwardly, waiting to catch his attention. Let me just turn the music down a little bit. Again with that. BGM volume is... No, I don't think the, um, the BGM actually does anything. Okay, that works. Okay, so it does a little bit. Okay, I'll, I'll set it as that for, minute, for now. Waiting to catch his attention. The man's gaze, previously transfixed in his search, met mine. Caught off guard, he coughs and grabs the rating to steady himself. <coughs> <sighs> Rather bad practice, entering into a man's home uninvited. Mm-hmm. Apologies for that. Confused as to what to say, I mutter an apology. I I'm sorry. You left the door open. An uncomfortable silence passes. The man clears his throat one more time. Have you found it, dear? No. A beautiful woman gracefully glides in from the next room. Her long hair is woven into a braid that cascades her knees. Her past her knees, sorry. It's a style I don't see often. Well, a visitor interrupted me. A visitor? With a distant demeanor, the woman scrutinized me. She ended it with a nod in acknowledgement. It seems the cat has dragged in someone of interest. Interest, you say? Perhaps you should see what they want. Okay. The man takes his turn in studying me up and down. He seemed to be take—he seemed to take note of my costume. Wish you have good taste. <laughs> Thank you. I try to concentrate on the conversation, but a dull ache erupts. The start of another migraine. Well, it's a little early for that. What was this? These two people I didn't know were just casually talking. It wasn't like many of the dreams I had before. Um, excuse me. I just need to know what's going on. Where is this? Can you tell me? The man sighed, bringing a hand up to massage his temples. Oh, it's the same question with you humans, isn't it? Yes, I'm sorry to say that. Humans? Can you just tell me who you are? Hmm. It seems you've had a long day. Indeed. We was... We was taken unconscious by your cat, and because of your cat, we wound up here. Perhaps it'd be best you sit and rest for a bit, and collect your thoughts. Now that's a good idea. <laughs> We've had a long day. My vision was giving me trouble. Maybe it was the lies. And what does she mean, collect my thoughts? Actually, I just want to know where this is, if you don't mind, ma'am. I reflexively bowed my head a bit. This woman looked so regal in her dress and mannerisms that I guess it, I couldn't help it. Oh, 
A sudden shock of pain rips through my skull and I squeeze my eyes shut, wincing. I could hardly see anything, can't feel anything else but the pain. Breathing raggedly, I just cradled my head until the ache started to dissipate. And... Ah... Demoness and Devil. As I came to, my blurred vision sharpened, revealing an entirely different scene in front of me. Were those horns? This man who I just saw previously with pale skin was rummaging through a box of children's toys, intent on finding a particular item. I gasped, reading back. After waiting for me to recover from the spasm of pain I had experienced, the man finally stands back up to respond. Meeting my gaze, he finally answers my question. <laughs> I think. You think? You know who I am. You're the devil. I did. Gulping, I pressed forward. I needed to hear it. So, just tell me. Please. He gives out a long sigh. Tonight, I'm just a man preparing for his son's first birthday. Ah, oh, lovely. What? I don't understand any of this. A birthday party? In hell? Today is your kid's birthday? Of course. It's mine too. Ah, as if something had caught his eye, he makes a hurried dash across the room. Finally finding what he's been looking for, he holds up the object proudly. A baby bottle. He presents it to the woman happily, stroking her lower back in a loving manner. Uh, here it is, honey. <laughs> <laughs> My thanks, darling. I'll prepare the candles now. She returns the way she came, through a brightly lit room where I can detect the aroma of pop popery. I don't get it. What was this dream supposed to mean? The strain from my thoughts brings back an ache in my pa head, sorry. I struggle to go along with the conversation. Both of your birthdays are on the same day? Is that a little strange? Is there a day more fitting than the very day of the dead? Mm-hmm. Halloween. Another ache of pain. The pulsing ache was taking over again, and I bit back a pained groan. This again. Uh, must be the residual memories flooding back. I'll give you a minute with that. Gosh. I don't think we have amnesia, do we? As if a dam were just broken, I kneel over from the onslaught of information pouring into my consciousness. Oh. That's right. I died then. The fiend of having my bones been crushed, of having my flesh been eaten by... Look, eating came surging back onto me, despite my anguished attempts in pushing them away. I wretched, but nothing came out. The cat ate us and born us anew in the lands of the dead. Shaking now, I looked back up to the devil in front of me. J just what happened to me? What was that thing? I bent over, staring at my hands. What am I now? A ghost? Why, you are now a lost soul. Mm-hmm. How did I get... How do I get back? How do I get back to my life? I couldn't help myself from raising my voice or shaking with anger. But as if it had struck a chord, the devil began to grow fangs as his, as his sharp horns darkened. There is no turning. Mm-hmm. Death is final. Unfortunately, I think that is just the way that it is. That can't be right. I need to get back. He only sighs, mumbling under his breath. Endgame. Eject. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I need you to help me. I'll do anything. What I can do is bring you new life. Mm -hmm. That was very silent. I can't hear the voices in this game. A second life, living as one amongst us. Mm-hmm. Amongst us? Among us? Oh, dear. <laughs> I struggle to grasp the meaning of his words. Y you don't mean a monster like you. What do you mean a monster <sighs> like him? Truly, humankind's insurmountable plight. Mm -hmm. A millennia gone by, and you're all still the same. I felt a prick of rage rise as he said those words. Well, you are a monster. 
and how do I even know you're not like the other one, the one who ate me? Despite how worked up I was, the devil just answered me evenly. And what is a hero but one who slays monsters? His words might have meant someone, something, if I weren't on such a tirade. A murderer? But I'm a good person. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm barely 19. I don't deserve whatever this is. Didn't do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the optimism you humans hold. Mm -hmm. Always thinking about your prayers and your deeds. Yes. Balling my fists, I stare at him defiantly. And just what made you believe that they'd have any meaning after death? Well, I don't know, Devil. You tell us the law and ideology of this place, because we clearly don't have an understanding that you do. He sighs in exasperation. <sighs> well, lucky for you, you've been vouched for. By whom? Vouched for? So, let's make a deal. Hmm? The red-skinned man turns and hums to himself leisurely. I'm guessing this is one of the seven bad endings. Yeah, because it's in the game, it's seven bad ends and one good end. Roughly two hours per playthrough. I'll need you to collect candy. Candy? Just one. Okay. If you can manage. Okay, devil. Candy? Amused by my look of utter confusion, the devil dips into one of the many doors of the manor before returning. Every year... I hold a ritual of sorts. And what does that ritual require, Candy? To celebrate my day of remembrance, I hold a competition for the ghouls and demons of this town. Mm hmm. If they bring me a living soul to feast on, I in turn give them one of these. Oh, he holds up what looks like a treat. It's a candy of sorts, but it probably has some ethereal meaning. The wrapper clutches as I take it in my hand. Its grim paint is that of a severed eyeball, a living soul. So what I was holding in my hand was the life of a person. Is this some sort of sick joke? You're telling me you can you play a game every year just to kill people? My body shook with anger. I grinded my teeth with the candy clutched in my left hand. Undeterred, the devil briskly walks behind me toward the front door. A sign of my favor. A life for a life. Mm -hmm. A soul for a soul, a life for a life. A decision without, well, with a consequence. With an extended hand, he smiles wildly. No, a deal. What kind of deal? Yes. Despite my nerves, I shake his hand, seeing our contract. The moment I do, I feel at the palm of my hand a searing burn that sends me to my knees. Cackling, the devil watches me wreath in pain with delight. Good. Glad we can come to an arrangement. Relinquishing my hand, I stare in horror as at the bloody outline of an eye etched into my skin. Now, I'll <coughs> just be taking that back. Damn it. Damn it, returning back to his original red skin appearance, he waves a clawed finger in the air and an invisible force pushes my other hand open. Levitating before me was a candy, and with a blink, it was back in his grasp. Lightheaded, I stumbled at my feet. So, I did it. I made your deal. Now where do I get this candy from? The devil gleefully extends his arms as if orchestrating a show. It's just like the proverb. Okay. A cup of sugar. <laughs> he lets out another laugh at my confusion. No, 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 no. What's the fun in giving you all the answers? Yeah, let's figure out some things for ourselves. With his magic, he flings the door open and slides my body out involuntarily. Oh, and you should know, our deal expires by dawn. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Happy trick-or-treating. <laughs> well, I guess that's as much help as I'm going to get out of him. Okay, folks. 
thank you all so much for watching for a moment this is a pretty intriguing story and i'm also curious to see as well as the requirements for the good end because i imagine that the only way to get the good end is if you make the right decisions so that you're not a rejected by ash in the class and b the cat doesn't kill you so i'm thinking that thank you all so much for watching guys this has been devil's door for the moment i shall see you guys in the next time of this game hopefully with all the endings in tow thank you all so much for watching and take care of yourselves